tell you a story about Rabari Levine, who's one of my great heroes. So he appointed himself the, the chaplain of the prisons in the 20s and 30s. Now this wasn't a real job. It isn't like the British hired him to be a chaplain. He appointed himself as chaplain. So his job at first was a job in which his congregation were real criminals. They weren't, um, you know, they weren't good people who failed. They were like rapists, murderers, you know, like the, the works. And then later, when you get towards the late 30s, early 40s, they, the neighborhood changed. Okay, instead of having criminals, they had people who were arrested by the British for opposing the British rule in Israel. So they tended to be like very idealistic young men, very different than his original congregation. So a man murdered his wife, Erev Yom Kippur. Maisa Shahayev was over a, a ridiculous quarrel. He was sentenced to life imprisonment by the British. The prison population rejected him. They didn't want anything to do with him. They put him in sort of a cheyrim. So the British didn't, he stopped eating because he was depressed. I mean, it would be depressed to have a life sentence and people are treating you like an outcast. That's depressing. So um, the British didn't want him to die in prison because it would make them look bad. So they brought Reb Arye into the picture. What did Reb Arye say to this person? He didn't say, oh, you must have been like so upset that you didn't realize what you were doing. No, that would have justified murder and that would have put it, that, that's like saying to someone, from you I expect nothing better, which is, that's not loving the person. That's patronizing, it's snobbish, it's like, he didn't go there. He said, you did something unspeakably evil. Hashem put you in prison. He gave you the opportunity to do tshuva. When you do real tshuva, you'll be as holy as the highest tzaddik. And that took him out of his depression. So now I'm going to give you a relatively contemporary version of the same story. There was a girl in the bay who looked terribly depressed and out of it. And I saw this, but I didn't know what to do. You can't go over to somebody and say, like, you look out of it. Like, you look like you're, you know, you're orbiting. What's the story? So, um, you know, I was just, like, watching her. And one day she came over to me after a class on tshuva. And in the class on tshuva, reading the Rambam, I said, a person could do tshuva on anything. Those are the words of Rambam. So he said, I did something that nobody could do tshuva on. What's the stupidest thing I could say? Come on, let's hear. What? <laughs> okay. So she told, you know, she told me she had had an affair with her brother-in-law and her sister found out. Okay, now what am I supposed to say? So, I, so she said, I can't do tshuva for this. So I didn't know what to tell her. So I said, I have to think more. I went to one of the Rabbanim at Neve without identifying the girl in any way. And I said, what should I tell her? So she, he said, take her to Rav Simcha Wasserman. Do any of you know who Rav Simcha Wasserman was? Yes. Oh, such a remarkable person. So I didn't know much about him. He would come as a guest speaker to Neve every so often. So I remember the first time I saw him, he looked like Santa Claus when he was old. I didn't know what he looked like when he was young. He was small and round and white beard. And he came with it like notes like this. He didn't even begin reading them, which I haven't either actually, but he began to cry. He said, you girls are so beautiful. You're so wonderful. What is, okay, got this. It's very emotional and he was completely sincere. So this is who the Rav and Neve told me to take this girl to. And it sounded like a good idea, especially since I didn't have any other ideas. So, he lived on Rehov Saratz, and I still remember this day. And as I got off the bus, like here's Rehov Saratz and deep in the Bible Belt, I'm thinking this is a mistake, he's not going to be able to relate to her. So, but I'm there already. I went down, he lived downstairs, knocked on the door, there's his wife. Who does she look like? Mrs. Santa Claus. <laughs> okay, you know, she's a little round, an apron, okay, <laughs> a little tickle, big sock. And she yells, Bev Simcha, we have guests. Some girls from the seminary came. I thought this girl was going to faint. Okay. So we go into his study. Okay. He smiles and he says, And what can I do for you girls today? Is she going to say anything? Nope. 
So I realized I have to talk. And I didn't want to, like, I didn't want to say what, so I said, well, you know, this is a girl, and she goes to assembly for Balas Tshuva, and, you know, things sometimes happen in the past, and, um, well, this happened, see, her sister got married. What's the worst thing that he could say now? Mazel tov! Amir Tashem by you! Okay. <laughs> okay. And I said, no. I said, no. And um, the brother was like a very attractive man. And he got as soon as I said that he got the whole story. He was short. He was short. He had a little ladder that he used to get the books on the high shelves. He takes down the Ramba, and he he to the laws concerning murder. So what should a person do if they murder someone? What should they do? They can't bring the person back. So they have to dedicate their their lives to making a parallel contribution to the world. If they took a life, they should save lives. Okay, clear? <coughs> so you said you did a terrible act, an act that's defiling and impure. Okay, no patronizing here. You have to devote your life to doing something pure. He said to her, one day you'll marry, and when you marry, you should get a job, and when you have a job, this isn't just for your family. You should put aside money to help build a mikvah. And you know what? She did. But I want to tell you what made this story mean something to me, because I didn't know that that would happen then. This was the closest I have ever seen to Tachias HaMesim. He revived the dead. So what I mean by that is she was emotionally and spiritually gone and he revived her. So this is what happens, again, when you see people who are wrong and you could feel compassion towards them. Last